Frederick here to lay down another exciting episode of What's What. And our latest installation is about what exactly? CLVs, that is cable laying vessels. They are boats that lay cables along the seafloor, hence the name. Okay, great. We are going to focus on two cable laying vessels, one of the present, one of the future. Their functions, how they work, why they are essential. But before we dive into this scientific timeline, subscribe below. The Skagerrak, operational since 1976, one of the world's most advanced cable laying vessels. This pioneer has been on many world tours to install and repair subsea high voltage cable systems with the ability to load up to 7,000 tons of cable in one length. With its remarkable payload capacity, shallow draft and bespoke equipment, the Skagerrak is a cable laying giant. It can carry heavy equipment necessary for a job. What's more, its design is built to keep the bottom of the vessel as close as possible to the seafloor to ensure more efficient cable laying. Lastly, it has tons of tailored equipment like turntables, which hold the coil cables, laying wheels that, well, you know, lay the cables, and integrated navigation and survey systems to ensure everyone is on the right track. Over the last 25 years, this cable laying vessel has installed vast and deep cable links around the world. Most recently, the Monita link between Montenegro and Italy and the Nord link between Norway and Germany. But speaking of being on the right track, what's all this industrial stuff got to do with science? The answer is simple, energy demand. With a 19% increase in world energy demand coming in the next 10 years, there is a 250% expected market growth in the offshore wind farm industry, one of the most stable sources of renewable energy. That represents about 200 gigawatts that we will need to deliver over the next decade. 200 gigawatts, yeah. That's 200 billion watts, or the equivalent of, say, the power of 2 trillion light bulbs. But to get all this energy from the farms to the users, we need underwater cables. And to lay these cables, we need more vessels. And keep in mind, this growing trend is just an addition to the already existing cable laying installations, like interconnecting electricity between countries. Though the Skagerrak is impressive, it will need some help to meet growing demand. That's why Nexans is introducing a new addition to its fleet, the CLV Nexans Aurora. Aurora is a flagship of the Nexans initiative to meet the growing demand for high voltage cabling systems. She has the ability to operate in the most severe weather conditions and holds a 10,000 ton capacity turntable. And to learn more about this state of the art development, I traveled to Norway just after the vessel inauguration. How are you? Tell us why the Aurora is so special. Uh, Nexans Aurora is one of these rare and very specific vessels completely dedicated to the installation and repair of power subsea cables and umbilical systems. Uh, the cable is loaded at the manufacturing plants in Norway or in the US and transported to the site, sometimes during several weeks of uh, overseas crossings. And finally, the cables are installed. The company provides complete turnkey solutions, uh, connections between offshore wind farms and the shore grid, uh, between islands, um, 
and long distance interconnections between countries. So it's therefore a key activity uh, for the energy transition. Due to her design, Nexans Aurora covers the full range of shallow water and deep subsea activities, uh, up to 3000 meters. The most gigantic part of the Aurora is the turntable. What is it for? Since the installation site may be thousands of kilometers far from the manufacturing site, it's important to be able to load a high amount of cable in a single piece. Uh, Nexans Aurora is uh, equipped with handling systems for large capacity cable, including a 10,000 ton turntable uh, split with dual product lines uh, designed from the Nexans industry features to handle safely and efficiently the full submarine systems. The vessel also contains a dedicated and closed cable splicing area and all the conditions in this controlled environment are met to reproduce uh, the level of performance of the inland factories for the work on joints and terminations on board. The Aurora crew can be overseas from a few weeks to a few months and the vessel has been designed as a place to live, right? Nexans Aurora has been designed and equipped to make the vessel as self-contained as possible, uh, ready for long-range and long-duration operations. A high level of independence uh, is ensured by onboard facilities. In areas of minimal infrastructure, the vessel can operate without resupply and with reduced need for local support. Because the operations at sea take place day and night, the high activity and flows of workers never stop. Uh, the living quarters for the staff uh, is arranged to separate working and living areas. Uh, each member of the crew can rely on a single cabin with all the comfort and connected media as they require. So efforts have been made to preserve privacy, but still encourage social interaction with places for leisure time, uh, places to relax, and several rooms are equipped with large screens for watching TV and movies. Uh, they have corners for uh, discussion circles. And there's even a library. And even in a remote empty space of the ship's hold, they have installed a basketball backport. This, it has been uh, attached to the wall to improve all the guys on board uh, shooting and dunking. And because uh, health and safety for people on board is of paramount uh, importance, the crew can rely on a hospital room with all the urgency equipment required. The operations at sea of the Aurora need a high level of accuracy in positioning with special navigation systems. Can you tell us more? Aurora is equipped with a DP3 system, the highest safety level of dynamic positioning. Two redundant systems with full segregation between them are located in different parts of the vessel. In case of a breakdown or fire or flooding, the safe part always keeps the control. She can maintain her position relative to a geographical position or a fixed point on the seabed with a high accuracy, or maintain her relative position to another moving vessel or underwater vehicle. The sophisticated system is essential for maintaining contact with a deep sea cable and operating robots while uh, ships are moving in the sea surface. In addition to the geolocation systems, many sensors provide information of winds, currents, motions in order to correct the, the forces in the surrounding environment, which affects the position of the vessel. On this huge boat, there are no propellers at the end of a shaft, like on most vessels. How is that possible? Propellers and thrusters uh, correct the position with uh, high flexibility. So this is a key component of the DP3 system we just mentioned. In addition to navigating long distances on a course, the cable laying vessel must be able to maneuver very easily with a precision of just a few meters. Powerful electric motors are so much more flexible than uh, the combustion engines linked to a shaft. The steerable thrusters have high flexibility and ability to rotate the ship. To power these electric motors, environmentally friendly solutions have been developed. The high efficiency diesel generator plant uses low sulfur fuel, and when the ship is in port, she can connect to power from shore. During operations at sea, the cable A braking power is regenerated. And my favorite topic, what about electricity on board? 
A ship in the open sea operates as a small 100% uh, ut- autonomous city, so it's self-contained, self-supplied. The generators supply a real electrical and uh, electrical network for the lighting, all the vital functions of operations and the life on board, up to high powers for the main devices such as the thrusters and the capstan. How are the cables laid on the seabed? Subsea cables can be huge. They're up to 300 millimeters in diameter and up to maybe 140 kilo in weight per meter. So it's essential to be able to hold a long length of cable for a deep installation without causing too much tension or incidents. In deep waters, uh, the water pressure uh, can be extremely high. It's one additional bar pressure for every 10 meter deeper. The works on the seabed are operated by dedicated robots. The copiat injects water under very high pressure, which cuts a narrow trench in the seabed. Uh, the cable is immediately placed in its trench and the sediments quickly covers it. The cable is then protected by a layer of seabed up to three meters deep. Uh, the ROV is remotely controlled from the vessel with a joystick and monitors, just like in the best video games. Uh, Remote cameras provide pictures of the seabed and the cable, and complex tasks are achieved where divers uh, could not access. Why bring on board eight smaller boats on such a huge vessel? Once on the installation site, having a flotilla of smaller boats allows us to safely carry out operations with a cable that's put in the water, or to conduct lifting operations when repair is made. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have me on board the Aurora. It literally blew my mind. To sum up, there is a lot of work on the horizon, but lucky for us, the electricity industry is constantly preparing for the challenges of tomorrow. Now remember, cable laying vessels lay cables along the seafloor. They are an essential tool in building interconnectivity between countries and islands. New vessels like the Aurora are being developed to boost the use of renewable energy, specifically in the offshore wind market. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Want to lay down some new interconnection ideas for us? Feel free to leave a comment below. Together we can construct a brighter future. See you soon!